Wallabies in Wales, folks, this weekend, Rugby World Cup Pool C. Being billed as the game that could potentially cost Eddie Jones' job if he doesn't win it. You would have thought minimum requirements is to get out of that pool, but with a loss to Fiji, it is all on the line for the Wallabies. Wales thus far, two from two, and uh, looking to push on. We'll go through some lineups, some stats, predictions. You guys can let us know your thoughts on how this one is going to go. How do you think it's going to go? How do you want it to go? It's uh, it's certainly an interesting one. Um, the recent history between the sides, um, they play each other pretty regularly. Like some of the sides, you look back at the head-to-head -head records, just over five games, and it can go back to like, you know, 1995 or even longer. 2017 is the oldest game between the Wallabies and... Um, and Wales, if you're looking back five, the Wallabies kind of bookend the results, winning the oldest one in 2017 and the most recent one last year. The three in the middle, 2018, 19, and 21, were all kind of Welsh victories. But all the games are close. These guys don't tend to have blowouts. 29-21, 9-6, 29-25, 29-28, 39-34. .29, Always a close game, which for mine is usually a good watch. I like close games. I mean, sometimes games can be kind of poor quality and close, but um, I don't know. I like a close game. So that seems to be what is predicted this weekend. But um, yeah, who knows? It could be one of those games that just blows out. Uh, for the Wallabies, they have made changes. They've still got no Will Skelton. They've still got no Tani Tupo, who are two very big units who will be missed. Definitely. Uh, if you were picking two of the more important players in the Wallabies lineup, especially with Ala Latoa not making the World Cup, um, I certainly would have said those two, but they will have to see how they get by. Same front row, Bell, Pareki, and Slipper. Pareki retains the captaincy this week, despite the return of Tate McDermott, who has captain the side, despite James Slipper being alongside him, who's captain the side. They've had a lot of captains in this Aussie side. Eddie Jones talked about basically a leadership group rather than Kind of it all falling upon one captain. But if there is a captain this week, it's Dave Parecki. Richie Arnold uh, continues on in that spot of, um, of Will Skelton alongside Nick Frost. And Nick Frost was phenomenal last week. Line-out work was impeccable. So if there's going to be one guy who can rely on, apparently, to um, to disrupt and potentially steal some line-out ball and secure your own, Nick Frost is your guy, at least based on last week's performance. Rob Leota comes into the back row alongside Tom Hooper, who switches to number seven. And then Rob Beltini's there at number eight. So uh, it means Fraser McCright drops to the bench. Uh, Eddie talked about wanting to have a bit more beef in the back row, basically. So that's why he's brought up Rob Leota and kept Tom Hooper there. Tate McDermott's back after his early concussion. And I think he'll be looking to get the attack humming. He's an attacking-minded nine, so we look forward to seeing his return. And Ben Donaldson switches from fullback to number 10 this week. So Carter Gordon who's had a lot of spotlight put on him, especially the fact that Eddie didn't take a more experienced 10 alongside him to the World Cup. Um, well, Carter Gordon's dropped to the bench for this one. So Donaldson, who's played well from fullback, uh, gets the chance to run the show at 10. Remember, he ran the show from 10 after Gordon went off last week as well, and they looked all right. Uh, Karevi and Pattaya is 12 and 13. I don't know if we're yet to see the best in that Aussie midfield, to be honest. Nawani Tawase and Corin Bete have been good. <clears throat> Nawani Tawase especially has been one of the kind of bright spots on what's been a bit of a mixed campaign for the Wallabies. And Andrew Calloway, who's genuinely one of the best players for the Wallabies, gets his first game of this World Cup. So different fullback in that he's not a 10 playing fullback. He's a fullback playing fullback, but he likes to run a back at you. He's got a big old boot on him, so... Yeah, look to see what he can do. Uh, Fasler Scoop and Fa'amosili are the front row replacements, so Fa'amosili is going to get his first game of the World Cup as well. He is a running three, if you love it. <clears throat> if you love seeing a tight head prop who just loves to carry for 25 meters, put a head of steam up, and just run straight into whatever guy you can eye up. That's Pony for Omosili, so I look forward to seeing him go. Uh, Matt Phillips there on the bench. Fraser McCright, like I mentioned. Nick White, Carter Gordon, and Suliasi Vunivalu round out the 5-3 split on the bench. For Wales, it's um, it's changed. Remember, they've uh, kind of chopped and changed across their two games. Have the Welsh. They've brought back, I guess, what seems to be more like their first string side. Remember, the, if you can call it second string side, laboured a little bit against... Um, against Portugal in their second game. Gareth Thomas is back at loose head. Elias is back in the number two jersey. And Tom Francis, who's, I guess, Wales's uh, premier tight head prop. 
uh, back at number three. So they'll be targeting the, the Aussies at, at scrum time with the absence of Tupo. Uh, I think certainly they'll see if they can get the better of James Slipper. I mean, James Slipper is all right, but he's not like a dominant tight head. So we'll see who's able to get the upper hand there. Will Rollins, work great right man. He's back alongside Adam Baird in the second row. So it's an all new tight five. And then uh, Wainwright, Jack Morgan and Falatel make out the back row. Jack Morgan has been, I mean, Wainwright's back in, but Jack Morgan has just been on another level. He's He's been insanely good. Like, like as good as Nawani Tawase has looked for, for the Wallabies, Jack Morgan has looked for Wales. Even when Wales haven't looked flash at times this year, Jack Morgan, pretty much every game he's been playing, maybe not the South Africa game, he played in that game, right? But pretty much he's always, he's always looked really fantastic. So... He, you would feel like, is going to be a key part of any uh, Welsh success if they have it. And then Falatau as well. Um, try saving tackle. Try, uh, you know, partly put the team on his back last week as well. So those are two key men for mine. Gareth Davis and Dan Bigger is the returning 19 combo from the first game. Uh, so Davis up from the bench and Bigger back into the 23. That's a big difference in experience between him and Ben Donaldson. So that certainly gives Wells, you would think, a bit of an edge. Midfield is back to Tompkins and North from Williams and Grady. And Williams and Grady didn't exactly impose themselves on that Portugal game either. So I feel like you're kind of in better hands uh, with George North and Nick Tompkins there. Nick Tompkins had a phenomenal game in that first round. And then Josh Adams, Lewis Rezema and Liam Williams make out the back three. Uh, speaking of proper fullbacks, I mean, Liam Williams is certainly one of those guys. Loves to run a back at you, great under the high ball. So his battle against Andrew Callaway will be, I reckon, hopefully worth the price of admission. Uh, D. Domachowski Thomas, that's the front row replacement. So Thomas is back after a niggle uh, in that second week. Jenkins, Basham, Thomas Williams, Gareth Anscombe, and Rio Dyer making out the Welsh bench. So yeah, it's number seven in the world, Wales, up against number nine in the world, Australia. But as I said, um, I think at this moment... There's more pressure on, on Eddie Jones, but with the way that pool is lining up, uh, Wales would certainly like to just get a win and put that foot through the door to the quarterfinals. Stats-wise, Wales in the final 20, that's usually their worst quarter. That's when they concede the most points, but they didn't against Portugal, so that was a nice kind of turnaround. And Wales, interestingly, across the last couple of games have managed to score four tries in each of their games. And that's not really been something they've been doing in 2023. The Six Nations try scoring record was very limited. So for them to have that big increase, it's uh, it's good. You might have expected them to score more than four tries against Portugal, but still, four tries in each of their two games is uh, a big check mark in that box going forward. Run meters per carry numbers are also going up. Like Wales attack at this time of the year is looking better than it was at the start of the year when it was genuinely looking kind of a bit blunt. The Aussie tackling percentage, though, has been bad. On their side of things, it's been below 80% in their first two games. You're probably not going to win many test matches if you're dropping off that many tackles, but they've been good at winning turnovers. Good at winning turnovers is great as long as you don't concede too many penalties, though. They conceded a whopping 18 against Fiji, which is genuinely pretty awful. But um, positive side of things, they have been starting games quickly all year. So if they can get off to a flying start, put the Welsh guys under a bit of pressure, score in those first 20 minutes, um, they'll certainly be giving themselves a better chance than if it's a bit of an arm wrestle. So yeah, we'll have to see. Bookies and Rugby Forecast algorithm got this one being very tight. The bookies are pretty much at evens with the Aussies as kind of half a point favourites. And the Rugby Forecast algorithm says Australia by two. It is on at 9 o'clock local time in Lyon. Wayne Barnes is the ref. I think Eddie said he's hoping for a quick game from him with not too much kind of slowing down at the breakdown. 8 in the morning here in NZ. I feel like east coast of Australia, your time zone is not too bad for that game. Pretty early if you're in Perth or out west. But um, yeah, I think it's on Channel 9 for free for you Aussie guys. And certainly in the UK, it's on ITV and it's on S4C for free. So... Happy days for free to air rugby. You guys let us know your thoughts on the game. How do you reckon it's going to go? Eddie, <clears throat> is he going to get the sack? Is it a must win? Is he going to win and kind of pull himself out the fire? Or is Warren going to have the goods? Subscribe to the channel, folks. And um, yeah, I'll talk to you guys again soon. See you later.